Hello and welcome everybody. Welcome to another one of our little quick chats where I would like to talk about Crown Trick. I think it is a game that might be a little bit overshadowed right now by other games like Spelunky, but I do believe this game has a place on the market. My main reason for making this video is because I really wanted to play the game and if I didn't recognize the character in the art style, I probably wouldn't have because the Steam page is absolutely useless at telling you what the game is actually about. Let me read you guys this and then afterwards you can tell me what you think and if it's clear as to what the game actually is. Enter a labyrinth that moves as you move, where mastering the elements is key to defeating enemies and uncovering the mysteries of the underground world. While a new experience awaits every time you enter the dungeon, let the power bestowed by the crown guide you through this challenging adventure. Now that's it. From that, you can gather into a labyrinth that moves when you move. Okay, that speaks towards the turn-based kind of thing that they've got going here, which is the strategy tag. And then we're mastering the elements as key to defeating enemies and uncovering the mysteries of the underground world. Now that speaks towards using spells and combining them with a certain elements in the game to defeat your enemies with a new experience awaiting you every time you enter the dungeon. Let the power bestowed by the crown adventure you through this adventure help you through this adventure so from that last part you can gather that the game is in fact a roguelite because it's a new experience every time you enter so that is what happens when you read into it but just taking it as flavor text doesn't really mean much and half of this didn't make sense to me until i actually played like two or so hours of the game i was like oh that's what it means so i want to break down what crown trick actually is in my opinion and it's an indie yes stylized yes strategy game where every time you make an action, your opponents take an action. There isn't a turn-based counter like in games like XCOM. It is just you move, they all move, you move, they all move. And then you can use that as a strategy to defeat your opponents by outmaneuvering them, using your spells to get an advantage, either by using the elements or positioning or something like that. Now let's start at the base of the combat. That would be your weapons. You get quite a few weapons I've unlocked. I don't know, I'd say six or seven types. You get gauntlets, you get rifles, pistols, swords, axes, lances, staves, or staffs, whatever, however you'd like to produce, produce, pronounce that. And you can use those to make your way through combat. Then on top of that, you also have spells granted to you by your familiars, but we'll get to that. So breaking down the weapons a bit more, they all have an effective range, essentially, where you can use the pistol, three blocks in front of you fires one shot second shot and then two on the third and then you have to reload for a turn same with the rifle that has four blocks in front of you or tiles in front of you range you fire one shot two shot three shots and then the fourth action would be a reload swords slash in front of you three tiles in front of you axe goes all the way around your character one tile around your character uh staffs or staves whatever effect i think it's two or three squares in front of you but then they come with an element like water fire or earth wind whatever the case might be and then you can also work that into your build to work along with your familiars the game randomly selects three out of the ones you've unlocked so far that you can start your run with then when you defeat the mini boss on that floor you can take them as your second familiar and then if you get to the next floor and defeat a mini boss there they'll be able to substitute in for one of your two selected familiars, you can only have two active at a time. You can use the trigger button to switch between their two spells, and then you can use that to build up your build, essentially. And that combined with weapons can then give you an interesting build. If you have a very offensive weapon, you want some more defensive spells, you want area control, things like that just to make it more manageable, or you can just go for like nuke damage at a range with a gun or something like that. And that is how you would shape your builds in this game. You also have blink boots, which you can use to get an advantage on your enemies. Your blink boots have charges that refresh as you fight. I think you have to deal a certain amount of damage or something like that. Then your blink charges will refresh and then you can blink again. And then you can use that in conjunction with some mobility spells from the wind aspect. And then all of this will give you a bit more of momentum and a bit more control over how the turn-based fighting goes. And when you get used to it, it feels good. When you position yourself correctly and use the correct spells to stay out of enemy's reach and things like that, and you can just like nuke them off, take them on in manageable pieces, a bit of guerrilla warfare, it's a really satisfying game to play. Other than that, there is items, itemization, rarities in weapons, 
and relics that also give you certain effects. Think along the lines of Slay the Spire or Monster Train where they affect some aspect of your character's design either from a resource management or spells or weapon damage or HP perspective, something like that, that you can also use to, to shape your run in the end. And it's, a, it's quite, it works well. Along with that, you have rooms that can have an obelisk that has some kind of alchemy table or sarcophagus with a mummy in it or something like that that would also give you a benefit with a side effect which would then say something along the lines of you gain 10 percent damage but for three floors you can't switch weapons or you gain your health is fully restored but you take 100 percent increased damage from fire attacks for the rest of the floor things like that that you can also interact with to make it a bit more fun the game is very slay the spire and uh, monster train like in the way it's structured before I can recommend this game, there are a few things I do feel I need to mention. Uh, there is the little thing of sometimes it's difficult, not impossible, but difficult to see the attack indications on the floor tiles. And that can lead to you taking some damage that I would describe as very annoying but preventable, but all along still very frustrating. You also have items that you can interact with or switches or things like that where similar in other rpgs like assassin's creed or any of those sometimes you run over an item and you miss the prompt to pick it up and then you have to like do a loop-de-loop -loop and come back and try and pick it up and that can happen sometimes several times before you actually manage to pick the item up and when that happens it's really 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 frustrating um that also happens in this game if it happens during a combat room it can often waste a turn or you could have moved to something to specifically interact with it just to somehow miss the prompt to interact with it and you'd have to take another action to step away an action towards it again which would lead to a lot of unnecessary damage so i just stopped interacting with things um like traps in rooms because it just didn't feel like it was worth interacting with or taking that risk to interact with it other than that this game is a ton of fun to play i really do feel like more people should be looking at it and trying to pick it up especially if you're from the tactical game genre you really enjoy your XCOMs and games like that even some RTS games do lend to this very nicely and I feel like more people should be playing it it is a very good time if you do want to see footage of it or some gameplay of it there are a bunch of videos up on my YouTube right now I think four or five episodes so far where you can definitely check out the first one and the second one if you want to get a feel of it give the first one a watch if you're uncertain about the game and then if you're into it definitely pick it up but if you do make it to the end of the first episode and you're still unsure check out the second episode we figure out a bit more of the game and things start opening up a little bit more in the second one and then after that you should have a generally good idea to whether you want the game or not in any case guys this has been a quick chat i just wanted to drop in say a few things about the game i am really enjoying it if you enjoy this video hit the like button if you want to see more of my content check out the channel and hit subscribe if you want to see more of it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it and cheers.